done okay thank you which one do i use ha yogesh salaza which one do i use this or this so both Yeah, we can start. Hello, and welcome to uh, this post policy conference, uh, press conference. Today, uh, we have uh, Governor Shri Shakti Kant Das, Deputy Governors uh, Shri M K Jain, Deputy Governor Dr M D Patra, Deputy Governor M Rajeshwar Rao, Deputy Governor Shri T Ravi Shankar, and also joining us are two executive directors, Dr O P Mal, and Dr Rajiv Ranjan. So before we go ahead, uh, I would request you to make some opening remarks, and then we can go for the Q and A session. Over to you, sir. Uh, good morning. Thank you for your uh, participation. Now, the statement, the monetary policy resolution, and all other announcements are already with you, and I am sure you would have gone through them. Now, what is the broad picture that is emerging from uh, the monetary policy and other decisions that uh, we have announced today? I would like to summarize them. in terms of six points i would like to mention what is the broad picture that is emerging first uh, in an ocean of uh, high turbulence and uncertainty indian economy is an island of macroeconomic and financial stability the economic growth is resilient now all these have are possible that is financial stability macroeconomic stability resilience of growth despite two black swan events happening one after the other and despite multiple shocks that's the first uh, take away from whatever we have said second at this point of time there are signs that inflation has consumer price inflation cpi inflation has peaked and it is expected to moderate going into the fourth quarter of this year and the first quarter of next year and that is the numbers which we have presented in our uh, in the policy in the mpc statement and in the resolution but inflation still remains at uncomfortably or unacceptably high levels and therefore monetary policy has to act and uh, there are also several uncertainties which are clouding the outlook so monetary policy has to therefore act and that is why the monetary policy action of 50 basis points uh, rate hike that has that was announced today unanimous resolution of uh, the mpc the third point is that if you put together the first two points what i said now what emerges out of that is uh, that steps have to be taken to contain inflation and inflation expectations and the other thing that comes out is that the resilient economic activity gives us the space to act and the aspect of growth is always taken into consideration and is always factored in in mpc's uh, deliberations as well as in mpc's decisions the fourth point i would like to mention as a part of the broad picture is that the excess liquidity which we had that is being gradually brought down i have mentioned about it in the resolution and we have also said that there will be two way fine tuning operations with regard to liquidity uh, based on the you know evolving situation to ensure that there is adequate liquidity in the uh, system the fifth point is that uh, with regard to the external sector the current account deficit is expected to remain within manageable limits and uh, we have the reserve bank has the ability to finance the current account uh, deficit based on our assessment the forex reserves remain strong and uh, reserve bank uh, will effectively deal with excess volatility of the excess uh, of the exchange rate and as i mentioned uh, in the statement 
uh, the umbrella remains strong. The sixth and final point is that monetary policy will be calibrated, measured, and nimble depending on the unfolding dynamics of inflation and economic activity. The focus will be, the focus will remain on ensuring safe and soft landing for the economy. And as I added as a part of my statement, it is once again a whatever it takes approach for the RBI going into a third year. We had it in the first year of the pandemic, second year of pandemic 21-22, and also now given the challenges that uh, we are uh, confronted with, given the uncertainties that we are confronted with. So that's all I wanted to say. I would now um, leave it to your guests to take us forward. Thank you, sir, for the opening remarks. Uh, now we'll begin the press conference. I'll invite first Mr. Mayur Shetty from Times of India to ask his question. Thank you, Yogesh uh, Governor, the rate hikes have been very sharp and uh, they've come in quick succession. Are you not worried that uh, this will uh, kill demand, given that they are getting passed on also immediately due to the repo rate linkage to uh, areas like uh, home loans? And uh, the uh, second part was uh, uh, your rate hike comes even after you made an observation that uh, inflation appears to have peaked and we've seen uh, commodity prices coming off. So to what extent is the, uh, your action linked to uh, the external front? You see, inflation still remains at uh, 7%, unacceptably high levels. And even according to our projections, they remain above 6% uh, for the next, you know, for the first three quarters of the current year. The fourth quarter projection, we have said 5.8%. Uh, so with that kind of uh, inflation uh, trajectory, obviously monetary policy has to act. With regard to the repo rate actions that we have taken, if you see it in a comparative perspective, although our decisions are primarily driven by our domestic factors and domestic situation, but if you look all around, other central banks today 50 has become, 50 basis points, if I can say, has become the new normal. And large number of, many, quite a number of central banks are now hiking by 75 to 100. So there is a tendency that 75 to 100 basis point rate cut will perhaps, you know, take over 50. But then in the Reserve Bank, as I said, we take a very calibrated and measured view. We factor in the impact of the rate action on uh, the aspect of growth. I just mentioned it a little while ago. So the aspect of growth and the aspect of uh, a rate hike on our uh, demand, overall consumer demand, urban or rural demand, all that is already always factored in. And based on that, the, we have taken a balanced uh, call based on the prevailing and the expected uh, inflation growth dynamics. Thank you, sir. I'll move on to uh, Shitama Bose from Financial Express. Thank you, sir. Uh, my first question is on uh, the liquidity situation with that turning very volatile. Since the impact of the past hikes have not been fully passed on to deposits so far, uh, how do you see that situation evolving going forward as we enter into a, 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 a spate of more uh, volatile liquidity conditions generally? And for your inflation forecast that you've offered today, sir, have the, has the impact of the past two rate hikes been factored into that? They have been factored in, but I think I would, uh, I would ask uh, Deputy Governor Michael Patra to take uh, both parts of this question. Yeah. Once, once a rate action is taken, it's a fact. And we use all facts to make our projections. If we do not take into account prospective actions. So in that sense, it's a baseline scenario. But the baseline scenario includes the fact of us having acted before. As far as the liquid situation is concerned, you might have seen that there is very aggressive deposit mobilization, starting with the bulk deposits. And we expect uh, deposit mobilization to catch up with credit very quickly. Thank you, sirs. I'll move on to Mr. Govardhan Rangan from Economic Times. Uh, uh, for long, the policy was aiming to uh, 
get the economic recovery uh, what is into a durable mode. Now, if you look at the uh, credit deposit ratios, it's at 110 percent. Look at the increment of credit deposit, and credit is growing at 14 percent. And uh, the external demand is also very strong, and uh, CAD is projected to be somewhere around 100 billion dollars. All these are going to have an implication on the liquidity in the system. All right. So, uh, what is going to be the RBC response in terms of liquidity uh, when there is going to be a strong economic uh, recovery taking place uh, with a kind of a huge current account deficit as well? Thank you. You see, what uh, is the most likely scenario is that uh, the banks will, uh, the most likely scenario, of course, uh, it's a decision left to the individual banks, but the most likely scenario is that the impact of the rate hike will be passed on by the banks to the deposit rates. Already the trend has started. Several, uh, quite a number of banks have increased uh, their deposit rates in the recent weeks, and that trend will continue because when there is a credit offtake, obviously the bank banks can sustain and support that credit offtake only if they have higher deposits. They cannot be relying on central bank money on a perennial basis to support credit offtake. They have to mobilize their own resources and own funds. So that is something which uh, is the most uh, likely scenario. With regard to liquidity, as I have said it as, as you know, as has been said uh, in my statement, that uh, we will do two-way operations for uh, you know, dealing with the liquidity situation that is uh, prevailing. Last month, there was a sudden you know, squeeze on liquidity because of uh, you know, very high GST and other tax collections. So that was just for about uh, three, four days. So therefore, we conducted that uh, you know, the fine-tuning operation of uh, injecting repo you know, we did a repo operation of uh, three days maturity. So our effort will be in to ensure that there is adequate uh, liquidity and uh, the rest for supporting the borrowing, uh, for supporting the credit offtake, I think the banks will, I mean, the most likely scenario, I just repeat myself, is that the banks will raise their own, uh, perhaps the deposit rates, and they will take efforts to mobilize uh, more deposits. Deputy Governor Patra just mentioned about uh, banks, uh, you know, launching uh, mo deposit mobilization drive. So that process, I would expect, will continue. In terms of the MPC's decision itself, how much did the currency weigh, the movement of currency, because there's a line mentioning about uh, the US dollar appreciation could have an impact on the uh, inflation as well. So how much did it weigh on the MPC's unanimous decision? The MPC, the monetary policy is an inflation targeting framework while keeping in mind the objective of growth. So therefore, it is the inflation growth uh, dynamics which is the primary factor that determines monetary policy actions. Exchange rate indirectly may come in because it leads to, you know, a rupee depreciation leads to imported inflation. So its impact on inflation is definitely a factor, but the rate per se is not a factor for the MPC to uh, for the MPC to really deliberate upon or base its decision uh, on uh, the exchange rate. Thank you, sir. I'll move on to uh, Ms. Lata Vinkitesh from CNBC TV 18. Thank you, Yogesh. Uh, thank you, Governor. Uh, well, uh, so you reiterated that uh, the macros are resilient. And in your speech as well, you point out that growth is uh, fairly good. You point out that capacity utilization is higher than the long-term average. Uh, so, and of course, import demand has been aggressive. So, still our real rates are deeply negative if you go by current inflation rate. So, will you want to front load and come to positive real rates uh, quickly? And uh, do you, f how do you, how does RBI look at the neutral rate? Do you look at it as 1% plus, 0.75 plus uh, inflation? Also, if you can give you, what is your CAD forecast, uh, current account deficit forecast, separately? So three parts to your question, and please remind me if I forget one. With regard to the CAD forecast, we have done our uh, various uh, scenario analysis, assuming uh, various levels of uh, uh, crude and uh, commodity prices. And based on that analysis, uh, we, have, we do feel that uh, the CAD will remain at uh, sustainable levels. No but the number I will not, I would not like to mention. And this is a continuing exercise. 
I mention one number, the number may undergo a change depending on the evolving situation. But at this point, based on our forecast also, we feel that the CAD will be at manageable levels. Now, with regard to negative interest rates, yes, negative interest rates are a matter of uh, concern, and that is something which uh, uh, obviously engages the attention of uh, the MPC during its uh, discussions and also internally in the Reserve Bank. And uh, with regard to the, what was the other the, thing? The, the specific question is, will you want to front load and ah, come that, to positive rates quickly? Okay, now that is something which uh, I'm afraid I cannot uh, spell out because it will depend on the evolving uh, dynamics. And uh, there are two aspects to it. One is our primary uh, target of, you know, bringing down inflation closer to the target and factoring in the aspect of growth and so many international uncertainties and developments. So the exact approach, whether we will front load or we will space out, I mean, it is for you to really assess. So far as the MPC is concerned, I, as I just said at the beginning, the MPC will take measured and uh, calibrated action depending on the evolving situation. Beyond that, it will not be possible for me to provide an actual, you know, a kind of a road map that this is how we are going to do. Perhaps you are referring to the kind of dot plot uh, that uh, US uh, adopts, but in an uncertain environment that we are living in today, extreme uncertainty, I think the dot plot itself will have to be revised every fortnight. No, my minimal point is that even your year ahead inflation forecast is 5%. You'll have given that new number for the first quarter. And, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, that is still one percentage point above the 4 percent, which is the MPC's target. Therefore, will you front load? I think, would you like to approach? Is there something we would like to add? Uh, when we were in the pandemic mode, there was only one uh, thing that was moving. That was inflation was high and the policy rate was low. Now we have two moving parts. One is the policy rate is rising and inflation is likely to fall. So anything can happen. Now there are two moving parts. It might be sooner or it might be later. Thank you, sirs. I'll move on to Mr. Anup Roy from Bloomberg. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, uh, sir, I'm, uh, I'll, I'll take uh, uh, Lata Ma'am's question a little bit more. Sir, uh, CAD, you are saying it will, be, it will be sustainable, and earlier you have said the CAD is modest. Uh, after the trade data, uh, recent trade data, some analysts are saying CAD can be 4% of GDP. So what gives you confidence that CAD will be sustainable and modest? And what is, I mean, uh, in your previous study also, sustainable uh, CAD was around 2.5% or something like that. Thank you. I thought I answered that question, but I think uh, let uh, Deputy Governor uh, say if he wishes to add anything. Um, the, the CAD for the year as a whole cannot be assessed on the basis of one month's trade deficit. I, yeah, no, you've just got May and June, which were high. Okay, now let me tell you some facts about the trade deficit. First of all, the small uh, decline in exports is because petroleum product exports have slowed down. Now, the government has immediately responded by reducing the export tax and also the windfall tax. And we expect that it will be back on stream in a month's time, because this reduction of duty has been sizable, number one. Number two is in the imports. The average price of oil, which we announced in the MPC, was 105 per barrel, which is in governor's footnote. But today is trading at 94. All commodity prices are easing. So we expect a lot of relief on the import front. Now, what is the thing about the current account deficit? It's not the size that matters. Is it financiable or is it not? Now, FDI is higher than last year. Portfolio flows have started coming back in a big way. On August 1st, we got portfolio inflows of the amount equal to whole of July. Trade credits are strong. ECB, we have enhanced the opportunities for accessing it. And NRA deposits are also being liberalized. So uh, I think it's eminently financiable. Thank you, sirs. I'll uh, move on to uh, Mr. Lalthindu Mishra from the Hindu. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Governor, we are now confronted with the third black swan event uh, that is happening, playing out in Asia. Uh, are we worried for that? And if, in case that happens, do you have any, anything to handle this situation? 
Thank you, sir. You are referring to, you know, what's happening in uh, Taiwan, probably. Now, I think it will be extremely premature to call it a black swan event, because we are just about uh, two or three days into it. But so far as India is concerned, you know, our trade with uh, Taiwan is uh, minuscule. It's about 0.7%, uh, uh, if I remember correctly, 0.7% of our total trade. So, therefore, uh, the impact on India is expected to be, uh, will be very, very, very negligible because we just don't have, and, uh, if, you know, the uh, uh, capital flows in terms of FDI and other things are also very, very, more, you know, very low. So, therefore, India is not really going to be impacted with regard to what's uh, happening or what is likely to happen in Taiwan. Thank you, sir. I'll move on to uh, Mr. Bijoy Idicheria uh, from Informist Media to ask his question. Uh, thank you, Yogi, sir. Um, sir, uh, is it possible for RBI and MPC to look at decoupling? Because we've heard that word being used in past statements uh, from the RBI. But is it possible to actually decouple from global peers, from global players, even when there are so many factors at work? And also, now that you are well over the pre-pandemic level on the repo rate, uh, was there a discussion on actually moving to a neutral stance? And it, was that the cause of dissent from Jain sir for the stance? Now, the cause of dissent, et cetera, I think you have to wait for the minutes of the individual uh, members. It will not be correct on my part to paraphrase what uh, individual members say in the MPC. Their minutes will come out after two weeks, and you will uh, see it. Now, with regard to decoupling, now the point is, you know, we are living in a globalized world. So India obviously is impacted and will be impacted uh, by what is happening all around. And in fact, uh, it is, I think there is a sentence in my statement that India has been impacted, uh, you know, by the, you know, by all these uh, geopolitical uh, crisis and the, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, pandemic uh, uh, related uh, shock. So therefore, uh, uh, India will be impacted. Decoupling, I think we might have in the, if I remember correctly, we have, would have said it in a particular context, not, uh, not necessarily that we are completely isolated, you know, we are, uh, you know, kind of a, uh, completely insulated or isolated from what is happening all around. India will be impacted by what is uh, happening all over. And we have seen it in the recent uh, uh, years and we are seeing it even now. So therefore, uh, uh, one thing that is happening today worldwide is that uh, the world is getting, uh, you know, more uh, fragmented. There is a sentence in my statement. The world is getting more fragmented in terms of uh, trade, in terms of capital flows, in terms of geopolitics. And perhaps the war is no, uh, perhaps the world is no more flat. So in that situation, India will be impacted by what's happening all around. Asked whether neutral stance was discussed because you'll have now moved past the pre-pandemic point. I think what was discussed you will see in the minutes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I'll uh, move on to Mr. Subrat Panda from Business Standard. Thank you, sir. Um, is the RBI worried that there is an element of demand pull factor that is making the inflation persistent? And also now that you've said that inflation has peaked, so at what level will you feel comfortable to pause? So far, uh, you know, the, the current inflation is concerned. I think the demand pull is not a, not a significant factor. It's primarily due to various supply chain issues and because of various international developments and because of imported inflation. India did not uh, inject the kind of uh, liquidity and other kind of stimulus uh, support which uh, many other countries, especially advanced countries, provided to their economies, which has resulted in a lot of, uh, you know, demand pressure and there is, uh, naturally, that has fueled inflation. So far as India is concerned, the monetary policy actions did not fuel uh, inflation. I mean, that is the position what uh, comes out, out of our analysis today as of now. So therefore, it's essentially because of supply chain and international factors that it is happening. And what else you asked? 
that only you know it's an it's a very very uncertain situation and it's not as if i am trying to you know answer also to answer to your question it's not as if i am trying to be diplomatic or anything uh, it's very difficult to say at what level we will pause because the situation is dynamic the situation is uh, extremely uncertain thank you sir i'll move on to miss gopika gopakumar from the mint newspaper Good afternoon, Governor. Thank you, Rung Yogesh, sir. Uh, my question is with regards to the um, uh, relaxation that RBI came out with, the measures that RBI came out with with regards to increasing forex inflows. It's been a month uh, you came out with these measures to increase NRE deposit, relaxations on NRE deposits. What has been the impact of these measures? Um, has, has there been, uh, because bankers keep saying there's not been much demand from for NRE deposits, what has been the demand? And secondly, uh, Niti Ayo came out with, uh, you know, a regulatory framework for digital banks. Uh, is RBI in favor of setting up digital banks? Now, with regard to the first question, uh, we announced these uh, capital flow measures on 6th of July, to be precise. It's exactly one month. Uh, based on, and it, it required that uh, the boards, board of directors of banks will have to take a decision and we'll have to uh, decide what spread they will have. And uh, that is, I think, several, many banks, the, their boards of directors, they have decided and they have come out with their own decisions by, you know, announcing what kind of uh, rates, higher rates they will offer to the, uh, you know, for all these uh, FCNR uh, deposits. Now, it's too early. We will have to wait and uh, evaluate. And uh, it's too early to say what will be the impact, because the banks have just decided. And uh, so we, we can, you know, I'll be in a better position to answer maybe after about a month, uh, you know, to this uh, particular question. And uh, with regard to uh, the uh, digital uh, banking, etc. so, uh, you know, the entire digital space is under uh, uh, the RBI's, uh, you know, uh, we are studying the whole digital world not just for cyber security and uh, data security, et cetera, but in terms of its role in the financial services sector. The digital banking unit uh, framework we announced uh, last month or month. And uh, with regard to the digital banks, et cetera, we are, uh, uh, you know, I mean, that is one of the issues which is, uh, you know, we, we are examining how to sort of make the best use of uh, the possibilities of uh, digital lending. Currently, the activities are mostly being done. Uh, even today, digital lending is happening. Today, digital lending is being done by the banks. There are many, you know, uh, there are many licensed NBFCs which are, you know, licensed with the RBI. They are also undertaking digital lending activities. So this is an activity which is going on. The situation, the field is fast evolving. So whatever uh, is necessary for uh, dealing with this, uh, you know, in this uh, entire uh, uh, ecosystem, the RBI will uh, respond to the emerging needs. And uh, to definitely, I will not be at the current moment, I will not be able to give a definite reply that we will do this or we will do that. I think you'll have to wait for that. Thank you, sir. I'll move on to Ms. Swati Bhatt Chete from the uh, Reuters. Uh, thank you so much, Governor. So, sir, in the recent past also in your speeches, uh, you know, you've made the RBI stand on the currency very clear. You've said that RBI is there to defend, you know, the currency and will not let extreme volatility be there in the market. So I just wanted to understand what is the definition of volatility that you have in mind? Because we have seen on certain days that the rupee has been wedged in a 5 to 8 paise band, but RBI has been there aggressively in the market. So, you know, it wouldn't be fair to call it volatility on that particular day. And that has happened several times in the recent past. So what is RBI's definition of volatility? Is there an internal level on the currency that the RBI has in mind? Because we saw a lot of intervention when it touched 80. And, you know, we've seen it's consistently try to bring it below that. So just your thoughts on that. Thank you. Is it to use a cricketing parlance? Volatility would basically mean the level, the degree, and the, you know, the level and degree of the swing that uh, the ball takes. But let uh, Dr. Michael Patra, Deputy Governor, reply to that question. I think Governor has stated this many times. We don't have a level in mind. 
And volatility is usually defined in terms of some uh, measure of variance. And measure, variance, by definition, is the departure from the mean. So we watch the departure from the mean and calibrate actions accordingly. Thank you, sirs. I'll uh, move on to uh, no, Roy Suke Hanada from the Nikkei. Hi, uh, thank you, Yogesh, and thank you, Governor. I would like to ask about the um, uh, economic crisis in neighborhood country. At this moment, is there any discussion between uh, RBI and Sri Lankan government regarding the, some of the further assistance, uh, such as the uh, currency swap agreement or any other measure? You see, firstly, as a central bank, uh, we do not comment on uh, the economic developments in our neighboring countries or, for that matter, in other countries. We do examine them in, uh, from the point of view of what impact they can have on our economy. And with regard to the discussions with the Sri Lanka government, it is always government-to-government uh, -government, uh, discussions. The central bank, that is RBI, does not enter into any direct discussion with uh, the central bank with the Sri Lanka authorities. Government to government discussions are always at government level. So I'll move on to Mr. Ashish Agashe from the PTI. Uh, so this was with regard to the BBPS uh, announcement today. Uh, how will it work for one? And secondly, sir, uh, what is the motive behind it? Is it uh, to reduce the margins which the RBI has expressed, its uh, margins which the banks make? Uh, which the RBI has expressed its concerns over in the past, or is it more of a remittance uh, sort of a uh, inflows sort of a measure? I would request uh, Deputy Governor Ravi Shankar to take that question. Uh, no, and the margins were definitely not, uh, you know, what uh, came into mind when this was introduced. This was essentially a measure of convenience for NRIs and for uh, their relatives staying here. There are a few advantages. One is that an NRI might not have access to the full suit of bill uh, collectors that is available, you know, more than 20,000 on, on, on the system. So they will, all, all of these will become available to them. Not all NRIs might have an NRI account in India, so that will also not be necessary. So the whole idea is that they will be able to pay any bill, insurance, electricity, util any other utility, any bill, through a system, through an interface that will be provided by you know, exchange houses or even banks. The idea, the focus is on convenience. It is not on uh, you know, in any talk of spread or any such thing. Thank you, sirs. I'll uh, move on now to Mr. Ankur Mishra from uh, AT Now. Thank you, Yogesh ji. Good afternoon, Governor. Uh, so I just wanted your attention once again on the stance part. Uh, with the repo rate uh, surpassing the pre-pandemic level, I just wanted to know, uh, will it be a fair expectation that uh, this year uh, the stance will shift from withdrawal of accommodation to neutral? I think uh, with regard to future policy, frankly, as I said, it will not be possible to provide uh, a future uh, guidance. Usually when we are on a rate uh, cutting cycle, it's you know it's uh, it's the usual done thing and it's easier to provide uh, forward guidance but when we are on a rate uh, you know we are where we are now on a cycle of rate hikes and given the level of uncertainty i would not venture to provide a future guidance about uh, uh, about the uh, about uh, the rate actions the future guidance is essentially withdrawal of accommodation. That we are withdrawing accommodation and we want to control inflation. I think from that you have to uh, draw up your own derivatives. <laughs> so second, uh, uh, there is only one bank which has been remaining in PCA uh, for quite some time now. and. Uh, that bank is claiming almost uh, for seven to eight quarters that they have out of those PCA parameters. Not related to one particular entity, but as a process, uh, what are your considerations uh, for bringing that entity out of uh, a PCA? I mean, w what goes behind apart from those numbers? I think Deputy Governor Jain can probably take that question. Uh, that request has been received at our end. We are examining it. 
it's not only the quantitative parameters, it's also the qualitative parameters which we examine before taking any decision. Because uh, when any bank has been taken out of the PCA, it should be on a sustainable basis. Thank you, yeah. sirs. I'll move on to Mr. Anand Adhikari from Business Today. Good afternoon, Governor. Uh, Governor, what percentage of, uh, sorry, here, yeah. Uh, sir, what percentage of bank deposits are, you know, linked to external benchmark? Because I was looking at some, you know, RBI data uh, for the weightage average lending and the deposit rates. While the lending rates have gone up by 14 basis point, uh, you know, the deposit rates have gone up by four or five basis points. I just want to understand, you know, what percentage of bank deposits today are linked to external benchmark? No, bank deposits are not uh, linked to external benchmark. It's the bank lending rates which are linked to the external so benchmark. Some banks benchmark. like, you know, SBI and all, they offer the bulk deposit, uh, you know, on, uh, you know, which are linked to external benchmark. Even the Yes Bank recently they introduced a product which is linked to, uh, you know, the external benchmark. No, that is, uh, you know, as you know, the uh, deposit rates and so also the interest rates are completely deregulated. So it is for individual banks to decide their deposit rates. Mm -hmm. But so far as the central bank, the RBI is concerned, the external benchmark doesn't apply to the deposit rates. And there is no data as of today to uh, know uh, the percentage share of uh, you know, deposits which are linked to external benchmark? I mean, there is no such data? No, you are saying that some banks are linking yes, it. Yeah. So we don't uh, keep that data because, okay. uh, you know, because our uh, external benchmark is not linked to deposit right, rates. Right. So therefore, the question of our maintaining that data would not uh, arise. Thank you. If some banks are linking it to, let us say, the uh, external benchmark like the T-bills or the one-year, uh, you know, the two-year GSEC or 10-year GSEC, I mean, it's their, it would be their decision. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. I'll move on to Mr. Anurag Shah uh, from Z Business. Thank you, sir. Namaste, sir. Sir, uh, credit, uh, credit rating agency ke regulation ko lekar, uh, RBI को क्या दिक्कतें हैं क्योंकि अभी उनका जो regulator है वो दूसरा है लेकिन वो regulator के द्वारा rating loan की rating की जाती है नहीं RBI को तो कोई दिक्कत नहीं है हम सिर्फ bank का जो balance sheet है जो ratings वो credit rating agencies provide करते हैं और जो उनका जो असर बैंकों के ऊपर है हम उसी area में deal कर रहे हैं तो I think deputy governor Rajesh और Rao probably I would request you to take that question. Yeah, we don't have any issues, I think. Uh, but the fundamental fact is the rating agencies are regulated under by the SEBI. But the bank loan ratings are required to give any concessional risk weights, et cetera, for the banks. So those guidelines have to be framed by the RBI, and those guidelines have been framed, which the rating agencies are expected to follow. Sir, the other question is, sir, you said that in the first policy, you said that the digital lending से जुड़ी गाइडलाइन से वो जल्द आ जाएगी तो उसमें सर क्या जो वक्त लग रहा है क्या आपने उसका जो पैमाना बढ़ा दिया डोमेन काफी बड़ा हो गया है उसका इस वजह से जो देरी काफी लग रही है उसमें और उसी के साथ साथ हम देख रहे हैं सर काफी देश भर से ऐसी शिकायतें आ रही जो बैंकिंग फ्रॉड से जुड़ी हुई और लोगों का ये कहना होता है कि जो उनके अकाउंट से अलग अलग तरीके से जो फ्रॉड्स हो रहे हैं लेकिन उसका जो समाधान है उसका वो नहीं कर पा रहे पुलिस के पास भी जाते हैं तो पुलिस भी कई मौकों पे उनको आ, मदद नहीं कर पाती है इसी ज्यादातर जो फ्रॉड्स हो रहे हैं वो सारे ज्यादातर मतलब मेजॉरिटी मैक्सिमम नंबर जो हो रहा है वो अनरेगुलेटेड एंटिटीज कर रहे हैं जो कि आरबीआई के पास रजिस्टर्ड नहीं है बिना लाइसेंस के वो अपने आप कर रहे हैं और उसको चेक करने के लिए जो लॉ एनफोर्समेंट एजेंसीज है लॉ एनफोर्समेंट अथॉरिटीज है ये उनका रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है RBI हम सिर्फ जो हमारे RBI regulated entities है जो licensed है जिनको हमने license दिया है permission दिया है उसको सिर्फ हम regulate कर सकते हैं लेकिन हम awareness create करते हैं you know हमेशा हमारा awareness advertisement through और campaign के through हम हम awareness create कर रहे हैं और बाकी जो आपने वो जो वो जो digital lending के बारे में जो guidelines के बात कर रहे हैं I uh, recently bhi ek Bank of Baroda ke event mein kaha tha yes, ki it has taken more time because we wanted to study it very carefully. Abhi bahut jald aa jayega, aapko jyada wait karna nahi padega. Monetary policy mein hum pichle kuch din busy rahe gaye, to abhi wo aa jana chahiye. 
धन्यवाद सर अब मैं मूव करूंगा सिद्धि नायक फ्रॉम मनी कंट्रोल Uh, thank you, Yogesh, sir, for the question. Uh, so I wanted to, I know, uh, for the fear of getting repeated, but I wanted to know if the central bank's multi-year process to normalize liquidity conditions can be completed in this financial year itself, since liquidity is getting tight or fast. That's one. And second will be on the international trade settlement measures that you just announced. Have has the RBI received any request to uh, set up these watch accounts as such? Second part of the question, DG Ravi Shankar uh, will uh, give the answer. The first part of the question is that uh, with regard to liquidity, whether it will be completed in the current year. Let me say that the overall liquidity, uh, even today, is uh, fairly high. It's in the upwards of uh, it's about five to uh, six lakh crore. If you take into account the SDF, the money which comes to us at the end of every day under special deposit facility SDF. The amount of money under 14-day V triple R and 28-day V triple R, and the potential government expenditure. If you put all together, the liquidity in the system is upwards of five lakh crore, almost going up to six lakh crore. So therefore, just as we, you know, just the way we have said earlier, it will be on a multi-year cycle. And also, one important factor is that. Uh, you know some of the tltros which we announced in the first year of the pandemic we announced them for a period of 3 years so some of them will mature only in 2023 so therefore the the process will spill over into the next year also i think the other part you can take uh, yeah on the vastro on the on the rupee settlement mechanism for trade yes we have received uh, some uh, requests from banks uh, many large banks are still in the process of finalizing the arrangements the internal arrangements and uh, you know there is a lot of to and fro a lot of discussions with our team in foreign exchange so uh, more more of them will start coming in uh, I, I, i think in the in the days ahead but we we have received a few proposals Thank you, sir. Uh, we are almost to the close of the press conference. With your permission, I'll take two questions. Last two questions. I'll invite uh, Mr. Vishwanath Nair from uh, Bloom uh, BQ Prime to ask his question. Thank you, Yogesh, sir. Uh, the measures that you announced with respect to the standalone primary dealers, I just wanted to get a sense as to what exactly it is that the RBI is aiming to achieve through this uh, through this measure. Uh, the second part, uh, with respect to the uh, BBPS question, I, I know Ashish has already asked, uh, but other than other than you know establishing just uh, just a payment option, is it really going to solve anything major where, with respect to an, uh, inward uh, uh, cross-border payments? No, I think it is just uh, a facility. At the as the deputy governor explained, it's a facility we have given. it is not really targeted to sort of uh, the objective is not really to sort of encourage more inward uh, payments or inward i mean more inward remittances or anything it is a facility which uh, we are providing and uh, it will definitely you know the ease of payment for many families uh, especially senior citizens uh, whose children are abroad and who may be finding uh, difficult to make their uh, payments either online payments because you know not because of unfamiliarity or in certain situations having to visit some place to make a payment it is just a facility which we have uh, given to improve the ease of uh, uh, to improve the ease of uh, making the payment and uh, th that's it nothing more should be seen into it and uh, the other thing you asked was uh, Sorry, the standalone primary dealers. I think either DJ Rajesh Shor or Ravi Shankar, you can take that question. Uh, the basic idea is to develop uh, primary standalone primary dealers as major players, as market makers in financial markets. Now they have access to interest rate markets. They, they are quite active in interest rate markets. but interest rate and exchange rate markets are very closely related as you would understand so giving them access as market makers to this would enable them to provide the full suit of market making products to both clients to their clients or uh, others from the point of view of users of the market having a wider choice 
of market makers is always a better option in terms of pricing. There would be a pricing efficiency we expect would improve. That, that, that is the broad idea behind that. Thank you, sirs. Uh, no, I mean, they might facilitate, uh, you know, as in when it happens, uh, if it happens, but uh, that is not the specific purpose of doing that is exactly what I said, you know, facilitate more market making. Thank you, sirs. I'll move on to Mr. K. Ramkumar from the Hindu business line. Yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted to understand, you know, uh, banks, you know, as part of their NPA reduction process, they have been, you know, writing off loans more than they have been recovering and upgrading, actually. So is this something a matter of concern for RBI, actually? And are you looking into it? I think if one of you can answer, you can answer. Uh, first of all, let me clarify, these are the technical and the prudential write-off, without foregoing the right of the recovery. Second, all these loans are fully provided for. So it reflects upon a prudence in the balance sheet, and it reflects a better position of the balance sheet. And the third we have seen in last two and a half years, there is a declining trend as far as right of is concerned, and there is an upward trend on the upgradation. Thank you, sir. And sir, the last question with Shama uh, from Doordarshan. Hi, sir. Uh, we can have a little more clarity since this is the last question. Rate hikes are for uh, taming the inflation. Have you estimated any timeline for the effect of the measure to show, you know, at least to moderate uh, the inflation? You see, usually rate hikes take about uh, six uh, to eight months to have their full impact. I'm saying the full impact. They start having their impact right from the beginning. But to have the full impact, it takes about six to eight months. And uh, so therefore, the impact of the rate action that we have taken, uh, starting with, uh, if I can say, starting with April, when we introduced the SDF at a higher rate, 40 basis points higher than the reverse repo, and then the May, June, and all. So we'll have to wait maybe till the end of, uh, uh, you know, till the, uh, till let's say, till October, November, uh, to assess their full impact. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, does RBI think they are close to or at neutral rate? <laughs> does RBI think that? They are close to neutral rate. Okay. No, I'm afraid I cannot reveal all thinking of the Reserve Bank, and uh, that will be a giveaway. And uh, very frankly, I mean, uh, on neutral rate, uh, et cetera, I think some bulletin articles have appeared, uh, have been given out. But uh, I'm not able to sort of uh, reveal the thinking. Because we have, uh, within RBI, let me say, there, is, there are multiple minds and multiple thinking. And they finally converge on my table. And then from there, after discussion with the senior management, the thinking of RBI emerges. <laughs> So it will not be possible for me to reply to your question in uh, very explicit uh, terms. Thank you. Sir, one. Uh, I think uh, you want to add something. So here, here it is. Get your pads ready. The path to the neutral rate is a two milestone journey. The first milestone is when inflation falls into the tolerance band, and the second is when it aligns with the target. So on uh, non-MPC question, uh, so one of the many mysteries of the central bank decisions has been the uh, approval or rejection of these bank CEOs uh, position. So there have been instances in the last few years where the boards have sent a proposal for three years, but RBA has cut it down to one year. And what drives these decisions? Because the question has been that if somebody is not fit for a three year and is not fit for one year also. So what is this uh, that drives the decisions? No, I think you are referring to a specific case. And as I have uh, said earlier, that uh, specific cases relating to individual banks, uh, I will not be able to reply. No, because there have been three instances, at least three, four instances. So that's why I'm not asking about one. It's about three, four. No, it's an overall assessment of the Reserve Bank. So not possible for me to, uh, because it can, my reply will be linked to bank X, Y, or Z. So we do not give replies 
you know, in uh, press conferences, replies pertaining to individual banks. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, with this, we come to the close of the uh, pros, you know, press conference. I thank all my media colleagues for having made it today. And uh, thanks to governor and deputy governors and my senior colleagues who have been part of the uh, press conference. So till next time, uh, stay safe and be healthy. Thank you very much. Thank you.